Welcome to Spilling the Tea, the talk series where we keep it hot and real about issues that are difficult to discuss and even harder to talk about. I'm Anna P. Santos. I'm Rappler's sex and gender columnist. And today we're going to discuss online violence against women or instances where women are trolled or criticized and vilified or threatened in the online space or on the internet. So it's, it's, a, it's a topic that uh, is dear to the, to the hearts of our panelists today. And we're like every episode of Spilling the Tea, we're bringing real stories behind this issue. Joining me is my favorite Fun, fun-loving feminist advocate, Hershey Neri. Hi, Hershey. Hi, Miss Anna. Thank you so much, Rappler. And she decides for inviting me yet again to another episode of Spilling the Tea kasi lagi tayong maraming natututunan sa ating show na to. Kaya excited akong mas marami pang matutunan sa ating panelists tonight. Correct. Tapos yung siguro pag-usapan natin, like we always do dito sa mga spilling the tea kasi nga we're talking about real stories mm-hmm. and and how these are related to issues. I-discuss muna natin siguro Hirsch, you know, ano ba yung online violence against women? What do we mean exactly by that? Kasi marami yata siyang spectrum. Ikaw ba, Hershey? Kasi ako nakaranas na ako ng hinaharas ako online or kinakriticize ako online. I've been called stupid. I've been called uh, tonta. You know? All of these things. Um, meron pa bang ibang klaseng viol- online violence against women apart from just, you know, being uh, criticized for, uh, for your appearance, for example, or threatened? Can I ask about your experience miss anna like what happened hmm. how, how were you um subjected to violence online as a journalist well, i'm sure and dami mong na experience i think most common in the space for us journalists is when we write something that is critical of uh, the the government or anyone who holds power it's already become you know par for the course. I will never say that it's correct. But it has become par for the course to be called stupid, fake news, mm-hmm. or you don't know what you're talking about. You, I'm keeping it very sanitized pa, Hershey, huh? because you know when I'm called stupid, it comes with all sorts of expletives before and after it. But I have to say, buti na itanong mo, kasi when I got my first rape threat online, I didn't realize how that would affect me so much uh you know i'm i was ready to brush off the comments about my intelligence or my seemingly absence of it and even my appearance but you know the the rape threat that i got was quite detailed in terms of how this person wrote what particular orifices they would like to violate and how and it was really shocking because first, I remember pa what was going in my mind. I saw it on, on, on the thread, and I remember like, <gasps> I froze. Kasi una una, wow, this person took the time to really detail this unless they had a copy paste of that exact comment, right? And secondly, because it was so detailed, I felt violated, you know, unlike the other threats or, or, or even the criticism about being stupid, I didn't feel like my personal space was violated or that I actually felt scared mm-hmm. especially, and threatened. Especially because you can't see the person talking to you. So you're like, nasan siya na, nasan na siya ngayon? Is he nearby? Or are they nearby? Or are they here stalking me? I think that's one um, form of online violence against women, you're stalking, you know? Yes. Oh my gosh. And you, you know, Hershey, bring up another point there. Like, the other, the other you know, criticism that was hurled at me, I felt, mm, it's online. I, I don't know this person. This person doesn't know me. But when it became so personal about my body, Mm-hmm. That that what I used as a defense. Na hindi naman ako kalala nito. Hindi ko rin kisha kalala. It's exactly what you said. Oh, this, who is this person? Could they be tracking me? Or or are they following me? 
biglang nag-iba no the whole yung mold of what I thought was a protective layer between me and whoever was typing these comments online suddenly became kind of weaponized against me because I didn't know who they were but they knew who I was That's so scary. And I can just imagine, no? Kasi especially now in, in quarantine, mas laganap din ang violence against women. Also, online violence against women. And I'm glad that we have this safe space where we can talk about this. Kasi nga, we, we really have to take action. We really have to do something about this. And if if you, no, na journalist, na ako, I follow you talaga. I follow your work, Miss Anna. What more? A lot of women who experience this. That's just so scary. My gosh. Tap, totoo. Tapos yung minsan yung meron tayong sinasabi, and I think this is what we want to discuss here today, na kahit online man siya, yung violence na to, nakakasakit siya. Nakakasakit, nakakatakot. Yes. And it, it's wrong. It is, and it's for that purpose, it is, it is very, very wrong. Ikaw ba, Hershey, matanong kita, naka-experience ka rin ba ng ganito? Ikaw, ang napakarami mong followers lalo. Grabe. Actually, <laughs> Miss Anna, um, one of my advocacies talaga is to this, kasi I call myself a victor, a survivor of harassment. Um, what happened before was, I got physically assaulted by my harasser. Uh, but, Seeing us, no, ikaw, you experienced online harassment. Ako, I experienced physical harassment. And yet, the impact, it's the same. Yung fear, yung fear for your life, yung anxiety creeping in, parang, are they going to attack me anytime now? And this is something that women face every day. That it's So, kaya ako sobrang passionate sa ating series na to. Kasi it's really good that we have the space to talk about it. Especially since we have a lot of um, panelists na experts sa ganitong field. We have advocates, we have activists, and we even have feminist allies here joining us. Full spectrum na naman uh-huh. tayo, Hershey. O oh, sige. Alam natin, si sa ating dalawa pa lang, naka-experience na tayo ng different types of violence against women. And this is just, you know, between the two of us. Pero marami pa nga dyan, iba't ibang klase. So mm-hmm. let's go and listen to the stories of our panelists. Kasi eto nga, when we have forums like this hosted by She Decides, it's always about personal experiences and how we can relate these personal experiences to issues so that she can decide you know, to take control of her life, her body, and her future. Hershey, unahan natin, sino ba ang mauna sa mga, introduce, introduce natin ng mga panelists natin. Yung first natin na panelist, she's an actress and an activist. Let's welcome Miss Kat Alano. Hi, Kat! Hi, Hi Kat! Hi! Hello! Hi, Anna! Hi, Hershey! Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so happy to join you guys for this conversation. <laughs> okay, Miss Anna, sino naman po ang ating second panelist? Ang susunod, si Bans Alcacer. Siya ang isa siyang founder ng Bantay Bastos. This is a Facebook group where you can report these uh, messages uh, of violence or threats. And Bans, you're also a member of the Young Feminist Collective, right? Yes. Hi, Anna. Hi, Hershey. And thank hi. you, Joe, so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you also for having us today. I'm very excited because you said it's very ano, personal to us. Yes. And speaking of Bantay Bastos, I attended the, the march a few months ago. No, March, right? That's where we met. And I got this from Shibana. Yung Bantay Bastos Whistle. That you're gonna, you can talk about later. <laughs> tamang tama. Oo, tamang tama. May Bantay Bastos Whistle. Okay. Meron pa tayo, syempre, dahil inclusive ang mga panels natin. At very personal stories lagi ang pag-uusapan. Of course, we have to get the other side also, right? We're all here talking. As women who have experienced violence in some form, intimately, but... We're also welcoming Jian Lau, who's an, a poet and essayist, and he's written uh, some articles about toxic masculinity. Yes. And nabasa ko din yung article na yun. Hi, Jian! Hi, Hershey. 
Hi Anna, uh, really ah. happy to be here. Uh, pag-usapan natin to. Uh, super important ah. just being able to share. Mamaya pag-uusapan natin. I think Hershey pareho tayo nung binasa dun sa article ni ni Gian. Uh-uh. No na na but mamaya pag-uusapan natin. Wag natin i pero excited na ako. Excited na ako. Okay. May ganun eh, no? May stretch. All right. Let's listen to our first story. Okay, we've had uh we've had we've shared our own stories Hershey. Mm-hmm. Kasi naman tayo kay Kat. Kat, I think you there's a story that you'd want to share with us and we'll give you that safe space to share with us. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, well, for me, I mean, my story is is quite well known if you follow me on the internet, right? This has been going on for six years, so it's, it's pretty public already. But um, so I was raped by a celebrity when I was in show business and I came out about it in 2014 And uh, when I admitted that I had been raped, I was viciously attacked online by thousands of people bashing me, um, calling me terrible names and saying, you know, death threats, rape threats, uh, that I deserve to be raped, that I am a prostitute, that I want to be famous, fame whore, you know, all these horrible things. Um, And I was even blacklisted from the industry because of my speaking up for my truth. So there was a lot of uh, backlash from my honesty back then. Um, Yeah. And that was uh, already six years ago. So it was pretty vicious. And it really gave me an insight into what our culture is like when it comes to dealing with rape victims um, and, and how far we still have to go in terms of making a safe space in our country for victims of sexual uh, abuse and, you know, and how much that translates online as well. Oh my gosh. Kat, you talk about this issue a lot and you don't, you, this is also, you know, that you're, you become an advocate because of, of this issue. What is it that you would like to, to other people to know? about violence against women and in what other space of the conversation do we need to bring this so that we do better in terms of respecting victims or as Hershey said, victors, you know, and also in the pursuit of justice? Um, You know, that's a multi-pronged question, Anna, because we have a lot of things that we need to cover in that. But the one thing I always like to mention that people don't know about Um, is that before 1997, our anti-rape law used to state that rape was a crime against chastity, which means that if you were not a virgin and you were raped, uh, if you went to court, they would find you at fault for having been raped. So it was a blame game for victims talaga. Like if you were raped and you were not a, uh, you were not a virgin, kasalanan mo talaga. And then all the rest of it would come with that. Uh, Malandika, Maiksi yung suot mo kasi nakipag-inuman ka, kasama mo mga lalaki, gabi na, you know, that kind of thing. And so that became the ethical grounds, the ethical foundation for Filipinos when it came to rape. It was okay to shame victims because according to the law, it was their fault, you know. And so this law was changed in 1997, but because people, you know, ordinary people don't study the law, you know, in many cases, unless it has something to do with them. Um, people don't know about this fact. So culturally speaking, we are still basing our ideas about rape on the old law, meaning we're still shaming people without even knowing we're in the wrong, according to the law already at this point, you know? I think very important, Hershey, yung sinabi ni Kat about laws. Because, you know, laws by, by their very nature, they define what is acceptable in society and what is right and wrong. And therefore, meron talaga siyang parang knock-on effect dun sa how we treat each other and what we perceive to be as right and wrong also. Kaya meron din pagbabago. I think no, that needs to be done in, in laws. That's the long game, Kat, right? But immediately and within our sphere, I think, you know, there's also change that can be made, right? In terms of... Uh, being better listeners, believers, when we hear stories like this from yeah. mostly women. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, uh, when I was being bashed, the majority of bashers were actually women and a lot of them had actually been raped. But because they didn't want to admit to themselves that they were rape victims, it was like if I admitted I was raped, then it made their rapes, you know, real as well. And so they wanted to shut me down. They wanted to shut me up so that they didn't have to face this reality for them. They just wanted to like brush it off as an ugly sex encounter or you know, something along those lines instead of what it actually is, which is, you know, rape and against the law, right? Unfortunately, we also have a problem in terms of briefings uh, on the law for judges and lawyers. So sometimes in courtrooms, they're still uh, ruling with the old law in mind instead of the new law. And this is especially dangerous because our age of consent is 12 uh, Mm. in this country. We have a lack of sex education. People don't know the difference between sex and rape a lot of the time, you know, and this translates online as well, because the mentality that comes out, there's more entitlement online, especially, you know, because there's no consequences to their actions. There are no laws online, you know, unless you're being censored by Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, you know, nobody's telling you that what you're saying is bad. And where did your ideology come from that you're spouting, which other people can agree with if they want to? You know. Yeah, I I just wanted to add yung sa justice no, sa justice system. Ako, I, can I can I share my story? Please, <laughs> but, please, safe uh, space, I, I, safe I just, space. I just remember kasi, um, so the I was physically assaulted. I was strangled, um, a few meters away from our college gate. And then the college didn't accept my my case against the student because it happened outside school now. So anyway, um, I I still filed the case against him. And, uh, uh, I still filed the case against him sa isa pang office. And then dahil don hindi siya makapag graduate. So what he did was he filed the case against me sa Manila City Hall. So nagkaroon ng mga hearings yan sa hall. And like what Kat said, no, yung justice system natin, I remember being asked, how many times have you had sex with him? What were you wearing? Were you wearing shorts? Are you promiscuous? And then I had this whole um, laban, a whole fight against me being promiscuous. And I had to defend myself that I'm not promiscuous and that I don't sleep around. And parang sobrang weird na ikaw na nga yung sinaktan, ikaw na nga yung, yung um, victim nung time na yon, but they still attack you. Now you have to prove your truth. You have to prove that you're not a slut. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's my coping mechanism. But yeah, so parang I, I agree with Kat, with what Kat said, no? na yung justice system nga natin, why is it like that? Why? Why? Bakit ganon yung mga questions? Na how many times have you slept around? How, did you enjoy the sex? Si mga ganyan? Well, the actual Parang, answer to that is that because they would have to discredit you in court. Because before, by law, if you were uh, promiscuous, they could prove that it was your fault you were raped. So that's why they ask you those kind of questions because then they can prove that you are lascivious by nature, that you are uh, a slut quote-unquote, by nature, and therefore it's probably your fault that these things are happening to you. But that's old law, you know, mentality. That's the problem is that they don't know. And it's awful. I mean, imagine if you were 12 and you had to go through that. You know, that's that's really one of the awful things about um, Mm -hmm. what's happening right now is that we don't have enough protection, and especially not online. (laughs) I mean, that's it. It it makes it even worse. I just wanted to inject also that um, the line of questioning is very aggressive to prove that you consented to it, to that encounter. I think from, from one aspect, maybe that's also where you know, we're coming from. So to absolve the, the perpetrator, that's one. But then the other thing is, uh, yung subtext nun is, so what kung sex worker ako? I can still be raped. I can still be assaulted. Basta it's against my will. I did not want this to happen. So meron ding ganun subtext na you can only be raped if you're uh, a woman of a certain type. Diba? Pero it can happen to anybody. Exactly. Exactly. 
And also the idea of consent is sorely lacking here as well. Yes. People, you know, yes. I've met women who told me and they're in their 30s or 40s saying to me, I didn't realize that I could ever say no. Yes. You know, so that's also, it's on shocking to people who have heard this, like who haven't heard that before, but it's the truth. And if, well, I will also share like my own experience in, the, in that light. Um, I have been in a situation where I felt like, okay, you know what? This guy is getting really aggressive and I don't feel safe anymore. So, all right, let's just, okay, let's just have sex because I think you, I, I, the alternative for me that I see at this point is that you might get violent and end up raping. I have also come to, that's, to your point, Kat, that consent is, is a slippery slope, right? We think about it. Yes, we know the definition of what it means, uh, giving a yes, but you, it's also sometimes, in my example at least, in my lived experience, it can be coerced from you because you feel like that was the only choice you had at the time. Oh my God. Hey, bago pa yan. Meron pa tayong, punta muna tayo sa, ang dami na natin pinag-uusapan. Uh, did, did, you know, did you know something though, Anna? Did you know that by law, even if you consent at the beginning of the sex act, if you don't want to do it anymore in the middle and you say no and you want to stop, that can already be classified as rape by law. Okay? This so This happened to me many years ago, Kat. And you know, when you were speaking about your experience and how women also reacted to your experience, I saw myself in various parts of that. It took me years to admit that to myself. What I just said now, it took me years to admit that to myself. Mm -hmm. And then to even think about, I actually had an option to say no in the middle of it. I, it didn't even occur to me. It yeah. was really more about uh, my safety. I need mm -hmm. to get home tonight. Yeah, was my was my primary concern. Yeah. So, iba iba yung hulma, I think. No, and I think that's why we have discussions like this when we talk about concepts like online violence and consent. When you think about them as words, it becomes abstract and it's pattern just very black and white. But yeah. in the experiences of women in the different contexts in which they happen, there's a lot of things to consider. Yeah, I and think that also, uh, sorry, Anna, uh, I think that also because it's about sex, right, that people automatically equate sex with something romantic or like, you know, consensual or love or, or you know, something to do with those things or, or you know, making out and sexy time, you know, that kind of thing for, for to be polite, right? Um, they don't, they don't, it's either sexy or it's violent. They don't know about the in-betweens, the ones that yes. are, you know, marital rape or boyfriend and girlfriend rape, or you went on a date and he got the wrong idea and then he just wanted it. You know, that kind of thing. Sometimes it just happens or you're in a club and somebody just slips it in while you're in the bathroom because you were un unconscious or, you know, you were drunk or whatever it was. People don't have any idea. And yet because of this cultural thing that we have, we don't even want to know the facts. We're just willing to call everybody a whore and that's it, be done with them, you know, as if we're defined by the men that touch us or, or who abuses us, right? We're the ones that are then tarnished because of what's happened. <laughs> So I get a goosebumps sa kong ayon. <laughs> oh, oh. and then yeah. yung so many layers, right? In terms of um, where this is coming from, and thank you guys. Nagumpisa pa rin tayo, pero yung feeling ko na this is also very a first time where I see the parang layers being peeled off, no, and the different experiences mm -hmm. and how they it's different. It's really different in um. In, in different ways, kaya kailangan din pag-usapan, hindi lang yung yeah. what we, we just know on the surface. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let me put it to you this way, and people always, you know, when they actually think about it, they think it's so weird. When somebody's house is robbed, right, do you then turn around and you yell at the person who was robbed, like, kasalanan mo yan, kasi hindi mo nalak yung pinto mo, kasi ganyan, ganyan, you know, no, you get mad at the person who robbed their house. Right. right? You're like, that guy's a criminal. He should be arrested. He stole your stuff. 
But if somebody violates your body, your own body, your own, you know, your only real possession in this world, the thing that is yours, your human right, right? If somebody violates that, people turn around and tell you it's your fault. I mean, doesn't that just put things into perspective of how nuts it is and how much, how little sense it really mm-hmm. makes, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kat, from there, I'm going to turn over to our other panelist. Hershey, pakilala natin yung isa nating friend din na may experience on the other side of online violence against women, this time receiving reports. Yes. So, Yes, she's actually one of the people behind Bantay Bastos on Facebook. So we here ha, here we have Shebana. Hi everyone. Kabe, I just want to say listening to Kat, Anna and Hershey. Sobrang nagugutom hininga na lang ako dito, napapailing goose moms, grabe. And imagine most of the women, if not all, experience this. Grabe. Mm-hmm. So, uh, going back and dahil din dito Two years ago, every woman, and I'm part of every woman, established Bantay Bastos. It's in Mar- uh, it was in March 2018 because we realized there is a need to hold misogynists accountable, especially public figure, because of the public impact of their pronouncements. Imagine yes. if the most powerful person in the country ay nangunguna sa kabastasan. How does that affect our entire country? So. Medyo mas ganun yung iniisip namin before. But then, it's like opening a can of worms, you know? We were observing uh, the behavior of people online and we learned a lot along the way. Nabanggit to, to, to ni Anna kanina na yung spectrum of online violence, online sexual harassment, misogyny, kabastasan, broad yan. Hindi lang siya rape threat, hindi lang siya slot shaming, it's also discrimination such as homophobic, transphobic, transphobic remarks, stalking, making fun of a person based on their gender, use of people's private photos without their consent, and so on. And I also want to um, note na hindi lang siya limited to the person committing the crime. Hindi lang siya to the person who created the content, but to the people who also share this, laugh at this content. I think They should yes. all be held accountable. No? Uh, uh, ba? Um, nabanggit What is ni- it that you do on, on Bantay Bastos then? Um, What is it that we can do kung uh, matutulungan ba tayo ng Bantay Bastos? Pa, paano ba nag-work ang Facebook group? I understand it's all volunteers, right? Powering yes. Bantay Bastos. Thank you for asking, Anna. Kasi dati, mas parang uh, calling out public figures nga. So, parang mas kami as part of Bantay Bastos, pag may sinabi na Bastos ang isang public figure, whether or not public official or celebrity, ganon, we post it to call it out to explain to people bakit Bastos yon. And then we realized, hindi pala yun ganon nag-work kasi people agree to it. People laugh at their rape jokes. So, sabi namin, may problema, di ba? If tingin ng mga tao, okay lang yon. So, we realized, kailangan nga mas relatable, mas familiar to the public, mas yung may experience nila sa pang-araw-araw. Kaya naman, ginawa naman na Facebook group na siya na mas collaborative and inclusive, interactive, na nakakapag-report ang mga tao, not, not just women, either na-experience nila ito, either na-experience ng kaibigan nila, or nakita nila online, near report nila ito. Ang ginagawa natin, dahil madami tayong members ng Bantay Bastos Facebook group and followers ng Bantay Bastos, mas mapakabilis yung pagre-report online. But we don't stop there. We also report them to proper agencies uh, responsible for reporting this and working um, and resolving the issue. So kasama dito ang PNP, uh, WCPC, and the Cybercrime Division of NBI. Pero ang immediate ba, Bans, napapatanggal natin yung posts? Ganun ba? So, Facebook, um, minsan tricky eh. Actually, mas natatanggal siya kasi matatakot yung perpetrator, di ba? Na uh, rinireport siya, mapapopost na siya online, public, kinocall out natin siya. So, they take it down. Um, I think it's also uh, about time that we call on the Facebook and other social media networks to... For the accountability din, kasi bakit nakakalusot in the first place, di ba? Na 
may mga ganitong post. Mass reporting, mara-report, down siya. Pero dapat in the first place, hindi sila nalalagay doon, di ba? I'm curious, um, I'm just genuinely curious, how helpful naman yung mga agencies like yung PNP in the movement? Actually, uh, medyo nahihirapan tayo dito kasi we all know na kakapasa lang ng Safe Spaces Law last year and by October 2019, dun lang nagawa yung IRR. So they are still trying to figure out paano ba yung process flow. Fortunately, we were able to talk to them few months ago, kung paano na ba yung update, ganon, paano ba nila ito report paano yung kailangan ng evidence. So, they're still working on the technical working group and guidelines, but medyo tricky din siya because apparently, kailangan may proof ka of the URL. Medyo may mga tricky technical details na kailangan may proof ka na this person's name, this person's account, ito yung URL niya. So, kailangan you use it, you use a laptop to take a screenshot or a video um, that the post came from this account. Kasi pwedeng multiple accounts, same lang yung name, pwedeng poster, di ba? So, kailangan nila yung URL and proof na that URL is the one who posted it. Oh, okay. may anong pa rin kailangan na step yung Uh-oh. naagrabyado na. Siya pa yung maghahanap at mag- to trace ng one is to one. Parang this URL belongs to this person. Mm-hmm. Sabi mo kasi uh, nare-report no, sa Bantay Basas and then nako-call out kung sino man yung nag-post nung malicious na comments. So they take it down immediately. That's one reaction. Have any of them ever approached the admin people of Bantay Bastos? Yeah, actually, ang nangyayari, they are begging, apologizing, messaging us to take it down or na wag na silang i-report. Parang, sige na, ano, uh, hindi ko naman kasalanan, hindi ko naman either nasabihin na, I just shared it or I didn't know that what I was doing is wrong. Um, sometimes, even their family members would approach us. Kung minsan naman, mga magde-deny na, that wasn't me, that was probably a fake account or na hack hack your account. Yes, madaming mga ganon. And you know what? Um, since COVID happened, tapos naka-quarantine tayo, sobrang dumami yung cases online. Kumbaga, nag-shift yung public space that we know from offline to online. Kaya din tayo nag-start nung ganito kasi ang lala, ang lala, online sexual exploitation of children, child pornography, hindi na lang siya yung what we know na slot shaming or posting of photos of women. Lumala talaga. I just also want to share na the reason then why we started the Facebook group. I, the problem with online sexual harassment is that it doesn't end with the deed. But also how the general public reacts to it affects the survivor mm. and how we view misogyny in general. So in a sense, uh, creating the Bantay Bastos group is about growing the community of responders. And we aim to est- also establish a safe space for women and men, um, somehow like a support group where solidarity can take root, not just in reporting, but providing support to victim survivors. Nabanggit kasi kanina yun ni Kat, di ba? Na parang minsan i-victim blame ka pa, kasalanan mo, tapos na-invalidate yung naranasan mo because of how people react to it. So we just want to bring dignity and respect back to social media. And if you think there's something wrong with that, I think you're part of the problem. Hershey, parang kung pag-iisipan ko yung mga nag, nag-resonate sa akin sa, sa dami ng shinere ni Vance sa ni Kat, parang ang daming very not so nice, no? let's just call it bad behavior. Bad bastos behavior. That's so entrenched in our culture. Kasi unang-una yung sinabi ni Vance na yung pinakamataas na position sa ating bansa ay nagpapakita ng isang halimbawa kung paano maging bastos at parang bastos yan ang kababaihan. Parang ang dami na nag, parang nagpa-follow the leader eh. Yeah. Pero, pero hindi naman tayo ganun kadili magpa-follow the leader if it weren't in the culture already and we just had to wait for someone to kind of give this subtle permission na it's okay kasi ako yung ako nga yung pinakamataas na position dito. Tapos natatawa naman kayo, di ba? Yung pa isa yung reaction ng mga tao 
it doesn't have to be na ikaw yung nag-post, ikaw yung nag-share, ikaw yung nag-bitaw ng salita. But the fact also that you laugh, you join in on this also emboldens the, the perpetrators, the violators, and this whole environment where it gives a signal that this is somehow okay when it's not. Kaya naisipan ko, saan ba nang gagaling yun? Yung where do we start with uh, with how ingrained it is in our culture? Sa, sa mga schools kaya ito, Hershey? Should o sa know? mga, ano ba? Yun nga eh, parang you have a point nga, no? Na hindi lang yung leader natin yung ganto eh. We have, we know, sa sarili nating social circles, we know people, we know friends, we know relatives who act like this. And yeah. bakit ito yung norm? Mm-hmm. Diba? Would Kat want to add something to that? Kita ko para yeah. excited siyang may prepared. And <laughs> so yes, Kat, please. Yeah, you know, uh, I always talk about this, like, um, it's dangerous to put the blame on one person because then we uh, take responsibility away from everybody else, you know. And, and for me, as Busta says, some of the things that come out of the government are at home with my relatives. I've heard them mm-hmm. before, you know, out in public, it, you know, in the province, I hear men say those things all the time. I get called sexy all the time. I get called all these kind of things. I get looked at, I get stared at. I, you know, all of these things happen a lot in our culture um, with people that are in our families, you know, and uh, it's hard, especially, you know, if it's your father or your uncle or somebody where we have this hierarchy of respect to tell off your dad, like, Hoy, bastos yan, wag mo sabihin yan. Or wag mo tingnan yung babaeng ganyan, ano ka ba, manyakis. You know, who says that to their, their relatives, really, in this day and age? They don't, they don't really do that stuff. So it is a very difficult culture to overcome. The younger generations want this to go away, you know, for the most part, a lot of them, because they're the ones being abused and harassed. You know, they're the ones getting raped and abused. I go to colleges all the time and talk to kids, younger, younger, younger kids who they don't like what's happening to them. They've been through mm-hmm. it, so many of them, and they wanted mm-hmm. to change. And I feel like educating the next generations is really the way forward because the older generations will have to follow suit, right? I mean, everybody joined Facebook. You know, like even people in their 60s and 70s are on Facebook now. So you know that if the younger people set a trend, they will follow it. But there has to be movement from younger generations that, you know, really strong ones saying, we don't want to live like this anymore. We don't want this kind of mentality. It's not welcome. And and we don't want to think like this or be abused by it anymore. Exactly. No, we just need that spark. We just need that that change, yung parang want or desire for a change. And tamang tama, Miss Anna, we have mm-hmm. one of those people <laughs> in our panel right now. Nako, nakakatuwa actually nung na-interview natin siya before this show, nakaka-refresh talaga to see a man, no? Uh, a guy actually side with us and believe us and want to make a change. Kaya without further ado, let's welcome Gian Lau. Hi, Gian. Hello. Hi, Anna. Hi, Hershey. Hey. Um, it's really sad to, to, that I am refreshing. I shouldn't be. This should be the norm. Uh, we should be able Thank to talk you about for saying things, that. Uh, mm-hmm. maturely. And um, one thing that you said earlier really jumped at me. Like, why? Why? Do men do these things? I, I think that's that's the most and and you know uh, men are usually the ones uh, perpetrating a lot of these abuses, uh, a lot of these you know a lot of this abusive behavior. Why do we do this? And um, as you mentioned, I wrote an article about it, uh, reflecting on uh, what drove me to do this when I was younger. Um, and I told you during our interview about the first time I made a sex joke and people laughed when I, I was in an old boys school and I felt like, wow, I belong. 
uh, wow. wow, they're accepting me. I'm part of yeah. something. We share a secret. We You're did cool. something. Yeah, I'm cool. We did something that wasn't allowed, you know. Mm. And uh, it's it's a secret that we share, and now we're bonded for life. Maybe if I say enough of these sex jokes, they will make me president. You know what I mean? Like that's how it felt, and you know, <laughs> we we see it. Uh, we see it reflected uh, reflected in society. And I was thinking about it overnight. And why do we behave like this? Uh, well, one is that sense of belonging. Uh, one is, you know, but why, why are we using this also as a means of deciding who's in and who's out? And, you know, just as boys. Um, and, I, and I do think it's kind of the way we perceive love and sex. Uh, the way we were educated about it. Uh, what do you know about love? What do you know about sex? Well, uh, this is how, how we're going to depict it. How, do you, how did you find out about it? Uh, you watch movies. Uh, you saw uh, people older than you talking about it. Like it was this, mm. you know, mysterious, secret, enjoyable thing. Or there's this whirlwind romance. These are the ways that we depict romance and, and love and, and sex. And... How the the next question is how do we get it? How do we try it? Because it seems so interesting and exciting and looks like it feels good. So uh, these days you Google try googling it. How do you you know how do you have a healthy sexual relationship with someone? You might get led to one of those pickup artist pages. We don't talk about it enough. How you know you know when when I started dating I. Um, I became single again in 2016, and I started dating, and I realized, well, how do I even do this? Um, how do I, you know, go out with someone? Um, you know, I want to have sex. It feels good, but how do I do this the proper way? Who do I ask? And really, yeah. nothing. I mean, people are going to give you the game, you know, or uh, lead you to pick up artist pages. You need to be alpha. You need to neg someone and you need to, I don't know, do all this, you know, creepy things. Underhanded uh, stuff. Underhanded <laughs> stuff. You stalk someone and maybe you make yourself appear like you're, you know, you're a dominant person when you're really not. And it's really unhealthy as well for, for, for men. Like that teaches you to really, you know, hate yourself. And when when we have like these ideas of romance, grand ideas of romance and, you know, and, and sex, uh, and you don't know how to get it, you do, like, the weirdest things, and you resort to the weirdest things, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's the, you know, part of the problem. Uh, how? And if you don't get it, you know what it feels like? It feels like you're rejected, you're ugly, no one likes you, and it really, um, it goes back to that sense of belonging of being accepted yeah. by people, by, by your peers, by boys, and by women. Uh, you, you're just doing your best to avoid rejection, and that drives everything. I'm not saying that um, this makes all that, yeah. you know, all that, you know, crummy behavior all right. I'm just saying that, you know, if we're going to diagnose the problem, uh, we can really trace it back to education, the media, the difficult, you know, the really tedious uh, job of, you know, reforming the way we educate, the way we you know, teach young boys, and um, reforming the way we write stories, the way we tell stories, and um, yeah, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty terrifying how daunting, you know, this all is about, you know, talking about education reform, and talking about media reform, and everything, mm. but that really is where it's at, uh, teaching people how to love, how to have relationships, uh, how to be ac accepting of yourself and of others. Because, uh, you know, it comes from accepting yourself. And it really, uh, this, this, all this machismo thing is really just giving all of us a mold that, you know, if you do this, if you're good at basketball, if you're in a band, if, you know, if you have a girlfriend who, you know, looks a certain way, then you are a man. And mm -hmm. I, I wrote about this in the article. We make it so difficult to be a man. Um, and there's this idea of precarious manhood where it's so difficult to attain and so easy to lose. Uh, if you do this, then you're no longer a man. But 
uh, and I quote the Rudyard Kipling poem, uh, If, where, you know, it's basically teaching someone to be a man. And parang, if you can do all of this, it's an entire poem of things you have to do. If you do all of this, yours is the world. Your, yours is the world, or something like that. And what's more, you'll be a man. So, being a man is actually, you know, above owning an entire world. So, that's, you know, we really put it on a pedestal, and it's so easy to lose. And uh, that's a problem. We need more, uh, like, healthier definitions yeah. of, you know, being a man. And there are a lot of them. Uh, like, you can still like the NBA, you know? You can, you can still like cars. And, and, and watch it. Sorry, I mean, I don't mean to put men in a box, but um, this, but a lot of people are, get defensive because, no, but this is what it means to be a man. Mang manya ka. No, that's not what it means. You can like basketball. You can like cars. You can like watches. Um, you know, you can be noisy. You can shout. You can, you know, drop your weights in the gym and, you know, flex or whatever without harming other people. I mean, without there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, without being a creep. So, um, sorry, I, I, I go on like, you know, soapboxing, yeah. I feel, but uh, there's a lot to talk about in terms of, I have a lot of grievances with how I grew up. <laughs> Let's you just know, put it that way. I'm going to call yung si Hershey in, in this discussion with the, yung parang, kung ito no, Hershey helps me dissect these things that run through my head. And I, I, I toss these ideas to her, pero... Which, because parang when I read Gian's, uh, I read Gian's article word for word, which was that uh, all boys' schools have a tradition of breeding toxic masculinity. So he talked about toxic masculinity, and I, I, I told, I told him, God, I saw my father, my my cousins, all my ex lovers and boyfriends in that piece. You know, I saw bits of them. And yung parang nakaka, kay, na, ako na babae din, nakaka-relate ako dun sa mga things na I want to belong, I want to have a sense of community. Yeah. And the idea of how you, the things that, you know, chasing that or wanting to attain that sense of belonging leads you to do certain things. Kaya lang parang ang kitid ng avenue for men of what gets them that belonging. It all seems to be related to power, dominance, Usually over women, and the dominance over women comes into yeah, uh, sexual aggression and and violence. So, parang I I think from our schools, with what you know, not pick up that was my biggest takeaway. This is where we can start expanding the definition of what be, what it means to become a man. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Kaya Hershey, meron tayong natapasok tayo sa mga schools, no? And, and the role that it plays first in becoming an area where we can learn and learn new things and unlearn bad habits and bad behaviors. We have a guest here who is going to speak to us about her own lived experience when it comes to sexual violence in the schools. Yes, and actually our special guest for tonight she is one of the members of the Restaurants Against Sexual Harassment and Abuse Movement. Let's welcome Hannah Dayan. Hello. Um, so, uh, basically, my experience is not that, you know, parang not that deep compared to others, but it was something that really struck me for years. Because growing up in an all-girls school environment, um, syempre, uh, they teach you they embody in you the idea of being empowered women, of becoming female leaders once you get out of that school. And then what really put me down the most was that um, wom- uh, woman pa yung nag ano sa akin, yung nag put down sa akin. So it was around 2018. I just turned, I just had my debut nung April. And then, syempre, I changed my photo on Facebook. To something related to my debut and then months after uh my family and i had this really planned family vacation in japan and then this discipline officer randomly messaged me on facebook asking me oh no hannah is that you in your photo and i said yes why and then she said 
take that down because basically you're ruining the school's reputation for having that photo. And then, Shemper, I would talk because I was in the middle of vacation. I didn't have school by then. I was going to come. I was going to come back to the Philippines a few days after my first day at that school. And then, ano parang I told my mom about this. As in, we were just hanging around in Japan. And then I said, "Ma, pinapapalit ng officer yung picture ko." And then she said, "Hala, bakit naman? Eh, debu mo naman yon, ganyan." So sabi ko, I don't know, kasi parang malaswa daw, kasi parang it showed daw my cleavage, ganon. Tapos wala, parang sabi lang din ng mom ko na, just change it, parang sumunod ka na lang, hayaan mo na siya, matanda na siya, ganon. So eventually, I had to change it. And then I told her na, pinalitan ko na. And then she said na, it's good that you already changed it. And then somehow, she threatened also my being part of the team. So parang, pinatreten yung position ko in being part of uh, my volleyball team na baka mapahamak or what and then that really struck me kasi I told a lot of my friends about this I told a lot of my classmates then what happened and then they were all shocked my teammates were shocked kasi baka what if I won't be able to play I won't be able to train with them and then ayon parang that really made me feel down with myself kasi parang a few Parang siguro few months after that, parang natakot na mag-share ng photos that were similar mm. to that of my debut. Kasi baka what if binabantayan ulit ako ng officers, ng, ng authorities from that school. So yun, parang I shared that online and a lot of people got mad as well. And then, no, um, when I got back to school, nadaanan ko siya. And then she said, "Hana, mag-uusap tayo." And then it just felt really threatening on my part because it was a picture months ago. It was during summer, and it was really terrifying. Na someone in authority is looking after you even when you're on break from school. So um, from that, parang it just felt. Parang sobrang na down yung cough as a student, as a woman, and basically as a human being. Because how will you feel empowered when the people in your school are the ones putting you down for what you're doing? Yun po. And even din kasi yung relationship ng ng pagano no nakikita ko yung I can understand your mom's point na kahit na nakampihan kanya and she sees you know your point of view. Ang hirap magassert sa school. Kasi yung consequences matindi na baka yan. What happened to the teacher afterwards? Yung kinausap ka ba, Hana? Um, she's she's not a teacher but like one of the highest like part of the administration. Mm. Um, nothing really happened to her. She's still in her position naman. But, you know, she's very much known for calling out, you know, a lot of students who, you know, parang don't go by the rules or don't go by the handbook. But you know, no man po. If I may, no, parang yeah. It's First of all, nakalungkot na babae din siya. The one who called you out is a yes, woman. Yes, so that's that's really sad, saddening for us. Tapos pangalawa, it tells a lot about how our society view women's body. Who owns the body? Parang ganon. How come my mother, my parents, my teacher can tell me how I should dress? And what I should do with my body. Parang parang ganon eh, no? Na it's it's a it's the own uh, it it's owned by my father, my boyfriend, my husband. Parang yun. yes, pa parang it made me question na kasalanan ko ba if ako yun na bastos for having that photo? It I had it was my choice naman to share it. I wasn't thinking na okay, bahala na ako mabastos ako because that comes with it. But it shouldn't come with it. Because mm-hmm. I shared that photo. I had that as my profile picture because I felt confident with it. I felt really good about myself with it. Yeah. Only to be put down by my administration na ano, parang put that down because it's a serious reputation of school. Ganyan. And maybe you know, a lot of other men who see it will sexualize you. Why? It makes me think. Na kasalanan ko bang masasexualize ako? Kasalanan ko bang 
masisira yung image just yung image na school just because I shared that photo. That, and that's why you really need education, no? We we yes. also need to educate the older generations. Yes. Kasi parang, yes. it's, it's very dinosaur thinking. <laughs> dinosaur. It's very... Jurassic <laughs> naman, Hershey. <laughs> Jurassic. Baka <laughs> makasyado makasakit kung dinosaur. <laughs> kung extinct na sila. <laughs> dinosaur. Sorry. Like, what is it with women's breasts that offend you? It literally feeds another human being, right? You know, our mothers have breasts, our grandmothers have breasts, uh, women have breasts. What, what offends you with, with this ball of fat? Bans, go ahead. On one end, kailangan nating mag-ingat sa mga nang sexualize sa atin, perpetrators. And then on one end, when we are being sexual, kailangan din nating bantayan yung mga hindi naman okay for uh, parang yung positive sexuality. I-call out din yun. And this happens online, di ba? Pareho. Pareho kang nakaka... Wala kang malulugahan dito sa mundo. Uh, and... I think that no, it's so hard to be a woman because I don't think men have this problem overthinking a profile picture. Na parang oh my god, will I be sexualized? Will I offend people with my photo? I just want to feel good, you know. And I, I just want Kanina yeah. no, Hannah mentioned that her story was quote unquote not that deep. But the thing is, it's not a matter of parang death eh. It's a matter of every woman experience this, whether yeah. it's it's rape, whether it's bullying, whether it's physical assault, kahit different stories siya, it's still on one, under one umbrella, no, we're all harassed. We've all experienced all these injustices. Totoo. At saka yung parang pag sa online space, parang, parang siya nagiging free for all eh, na lahat pwede mag-comment or uh, people also feel very emboldened to say things that they would normally never have the guts to say to your face because they know that, you know, it would be impolite, improper, and unlawful depending on what they say and do. They would never do it. But because of the online space, it gives them this, this, um, this parang armor and also feeling of impunity to just say these things. Mm-hmm. And dami nating issues na unpack no? What I was hearing was uh, we, there's a lot of this behavior is entrenched culturally. Hershey, parang ang dami kong issues na naririnig from our different respondents. No? When we started to unpack yung online violence against women and where it starts. Kasi I think from where it starts, we can start talking about how to make it go away. Mm-hmm. Right? And mm-hmm. ang mga naririnig ko is, first of all, there's, um, there's entrenched cultural behaviors where being bastos is cool. We see it from our relatives sa mga uncles natin, sabi mo nga, sa mga Jurassic natin na mga ninuno, Dino- nandiyan de. <laughs> Jurassic na, hindi naman dinosaur. Pero, meron din na sa, sa schools na enable siya, no? yung article ni, ni Gia na all boys schools could are, are breeding toxic masculinity. And then, ito, meron tayong isang comment from uh, Anonymous or one of our studio viewers Sinasabi niya, I think Miss Hannah's case is an internal is internal misogyny, wherein a woman may be blind towards other women's rights. Mm-hmm. Rishi, ikaw ba parang isa lang yung tema nito na we have to go back to changing mindsets? Yeah. Educating. Educating each other, you know, and, and this area. Ano, ano ba yung kailangan magawa. I think let's take a round. No? Let's, take, let's, let's ask the different panelists. Yeah. What needs to be done? And kung meron namang nagagawa na, let's also bring that to the conversation because, you know, we're not the, 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 the ones here in this panel who don't have the monopoly and wanting to change things. I think that there are many people who do want to change things and want a different way of doing things. We recognize that these things are wrong. Kaya lang, mas dominant kasi yung other voices na bastos. 
Let's take a round sa, sa panel. Let's start with bands. Sige, hello. Ayan. Uh, very, gusto, gusto ko talaga yung question kasi kami din nakikita namin how, you know, some of the perpetrators are minors and we think they really don't understand the severity of what they're doing, how it affects other people. And for me, kailangan nating balikan, parang sinabi ni Anna, kailangan nating balikan saan ba nila unang natutunan yung sexism, yung kabastusan. Paano ba to na, saan ba siya rooted? Possible na yung um, pag-explain sa kanila kung ano yung karapatan ng mga babae, lalaki, paano dapat kumilos ang isang lalaki versus isang babae. Nasanay sila na dapat ang lalaki uh, matapang, mayabang, ganun, di ba? So, kailangan natin yun makorrect. Once we know where it's coming from, then we can find the solution. So, para sa akin, mahalaga... Of course, na magsimula siya at home. Ako, uh, I am looking forward to uh, see uh, the parents, yung mga millennials ngayon, uh, when they become parents, I am sure they will be raising their children, not just uh, girls, but even their, uh, even the boys as feminists. You know, raise your boys as feminists, raise your sons as feminists. So, magsimula sa bahay, sa eskwelahan, sana natuturo din siya sa eskwelahan at an early age. Um, you know, different aspects of masculinity. It doesn't have to be um, hyper-masculinity and toxic masculinity, diba? Um, and aside from teachers, you know, peers. Ako, naghahanap ako ng way, how do we make um, uh, fe- femi- feminism or maybe how do we make um, how do we make feminism cool again? Na gugustuhin ng mga kalalakihan na hindi maging bastos kasi ang cool ay maging uh, mabuting lalaki na hindi nang babastos ng kababaihan. So, kailangan nating makahanap ng way na ganun, especially online. Ngayon, dahil online na tayo, napakadaming avenues and platform no, para pag-usapan ito. We should start involving men in the conversation, not just um, bilang topic, but parang ito, kasama natin si Gian, and hopefully, eventually, more men ang magpa-participate sa ating discussion. Uh, Meron ito, actually, si Gian is also familiar with this. Uh, our friends from Disgruntled Young People started usapang lalaki para kasama, para involved yung mga lalaki. Yung mga lalaki, pag-uusapan nila, saan ba nag-root itong uh, misogyny and sexism? And sila-sila, uh, also with uh, other women, their uh, other org mates, pinag-uusapan nila, how do they change this? So I think it's a healthy, wholesome discussion, di ba? Yeah. And it's redefining usapang lalaki. Kasi yeah. diba, diba, pag boy talk, locker talk, diba? Pero oh, here, oh. lalaki. And I just wanted to add, no, sa sinabi ni Bans na um, teaching the next generation, I just want to share what my sister does with her sons. Sobrang natutuwa ako. Uh, so I have nephews, mga preschoolers sila. And then, syempre yung mga kids, they find comfort when they cuddle with my sister at night. They sleep with my sister sa bed. And then they hold my sister's breasts. And then, my sister um, teaches them consent. Like parang, for example, she doesn't want yes. them, her, them to hold her breast. She says, you cannot hold my breasts, but you can hold my tummy. Okay, mommy. Or when they, when they hold her breast, she's gonna say, Remember, um, what when you were a baby, what did you do with my breasts? I drank milk. And so, parang alam nila na na it's not sexual. It's parang a specific. It's an anatomy. It's part of a body. Yeah. And then she teaches them. Okay, when you touch my tummy, um, what what happened when you were a kid, and what happened with my tummy? I was uh, ayan, parang your tummy was my house. Kaganan yung bata. Oh. And then later on, um, she says, okay, what happened sa vagina ko? Sabihin ng kids, I came out of it. So parang it's very scientific, di ba? Natutuwa ako na, wow, you can teach this to kids. Na the breast, the vagina, di ba? When we growing up, it's so offensive to talk about vagina, to talk about breast. It's it's like parang a bad word. But why is it a bad word? It's a, it's a normal part of the body. And yung sister ko nga, she, she was plugging, kasi she's a teacher, and then she was plugging this children's book na pinapahanap niya sa akin. Um, the, the title is Meron Akong Titi, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know that book? Yes! Uh, it's it's wonderful. Yeah! So parang it's a book 
that talks about the penis. Because, di ba, parang yung, yung, yung glorification of penis, remember? Like, ah, wala kang bayag. O pataasan tayo ng ihe. Or wala kang Palakihan. Bong. Yeah. So, it's, it's, pero here, they teach the children that it's a part of the body. It's not, it's not something na parang better than a vagina. It's just a normal anatomical part. <laughs> Yeah, lang, like when you said education, it really starts from home. So if you have nephews, if you have sons, you know, let's start with that. Kapit bahay. <laughs> and it's an it's a education starts at home in in small little increments in everyday conversations. Ang ganda ganda ng example ng sister mo because it's a it's a very clear message, right? You can't touch mommy's body without permission. Even if she is your mother, mm-hmm. and you have this relationship with this person, so parang I can imagine that that you grow up with a thought that just because you have a relationship with the person doesn't give you access to their body, you still need permission. And then napaka everyday example of what you know you can do, and and uh, you can bring these concepts into normal conversations. Because I think we've had a series of these talks already on, on spilling the tea. And something that's always consistent is how, you know, these conversations need to keep on happening. First yeah. of all, in small amounts, you know, for people to get... It's a big concept, right? Online uh, violence against women and stopping it. You know, gender and sexuality. These are big concepts. When you take it, uh, break it down into little bits that you talk about little by little, but every day or regularly, it becomes a part of you. Yeah. And it becomes part of that change that you want to, to see behaviorally within yourself and the mindset that you're talking about and the people that you also interact with. Yes. Ang ganda ng usapan ng lucky bands, I must say. Yes. Naintriga ako. Yeah. And speaking of women who talk about it every day, one of them is actually Kat Alano. So maybe Kat, can we ask, no, what are other concrete steps we can do to make a change? Um, you know, I completely agree with Benz and, and about the whole thing about uh, we need to involve men in the conversation. That's a very big deal because um, we live in a patriarchy. Unfortunately, it's the truth. And uh, unless men start to agree that women should be treated equally and fairly, it's going to be a difficult road for just women bashing on the door of equality, right? Um, but... At the same time, from what I've seen myself, especially here, we really need to work on the empowerment of women. And I mean the like genuine empowerment of women, because what happens now, going back to GM's point about having a community, is that if you want to be a woman and get ahead in this country, you have to act like a man, or you have to be willing to cater to what men want you to cater to, you know? Otherwise, you're not acceptable. If you are an outspoken woman, you are frowned upon and we don't like you and ha ha ha, you know, you're not the one and a lot of the time and you're not respected because you're just, just a woman. And see, like I go against this all the time and people say, Oh, because you know, you're half, you're half something else. You grew up somewhere else. I said, I feel more Filipino than most of you. And I've probably done more for this country than most of you. I consider myself a Filipina and I speak for myself because that is the truth. And that is what I deserve to be able to speak my truth and empower myself. And I, I come across a lot of Filipinos who say to me, ah, kasi, ano, kaya mo eh. Ako, hindi ko po kaya gawin yun. I can't do it, you know, myself. I could never say that. I could never do it. And I say, no, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can be and do whatever you want to do. And if you if something bad happens to you, you have a right to speak about it without people bashing you and treating you badly. You deserve to have your human rights upheld. And that is what you deserve. And it's important also because mothers raise the children. Yes. Okay? So in a lot of these cases of entitlement within boys and men, they've grown up with a mother who is an accidental misogynist. You know, she grew up in that cultural norm of men being the, the, the man and the one who gets the money and the one who uh, runs the house and, and is the boss, you know. So they, they raise these little boys to be that way and they enable that behavior within their own children. And then they grow up and become these men who are these macho, 
manya is whatever and I can do whatever I want because mom said that I could as well. So the empowerment of our women is very, very important as well. You know, I mean, not taking away at all from we need men in the conversation. Absolutely. First and foremost, we need men to join us. But we also need real empowerment for women, like genuine empowerment. No, absolutely. That's an interesting discussion. It's it's quite contentious depending on who you talk to. I've brought that up with other people and you know, in some we talk about schools and stuff and I toss in there, you know, it's also the mothers. They're the ones raising these misogynist, sexist boys. And I you depending on who you're speaking to, it's uh it's uh it becomes very offensive to some people. But when you think about it, and taking off again from your example, Hershey, right? You can, your your sister can reverse that role, right? Yung, natuturo niya yung concept of consent, of respect for a woman and her body. Pero kung kabalik taran yun, that's where it also starts. The concepts of entitlement. I can get what I want from women. Also starts from there. I think, uh, and then it relate ko lang din sa case ni Hannah, right? Now where we said it could possibly be a it could be a case of internal misogyny. Because it's a woman who has gone against another woman. Also, Kat, you were also speaking about this, right? You were just as viciously viciously bashed by women, just as yes. you know you were by men. Yeah, we actually, more more that. so by women, more so by women putting me down. You know, women put each other down in this country a lot. I've seen that a lot. It's actually insane to me. And I'm uh, sorry, somebody just wrote a comment as well that I was reading, which is why uh, I got a bit distracted. Uh, they said, it's important to educate people that you don't have to use your sexuality to be empowered. Um, I'm assuming that's for women, right? That you don't have to use your sexuality to be empowered. But just to address that, Yes, you don't have to use your sexuality be, to be empowered, but sometimes women want to be sexual to feel empowered, and that's their right. They can be sexual if they want to. It doesn't make them a lesser person. It doesn't make them a lesser human being for wanting to be bold about their sexuality. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, porn stars don't deserve to be raped in the street because they choose to be nude in their job. You know, like for some people, it's emboldening, and that's their choice. And we should stop judging people based on that. You know, if a man uses his sexuality, you know, uh, brags about how many women he's been with or, you know, how big his dick is or whatever it is, he's lauded by his, he's applauded by his friends, you know, oh, bro. Papi. They take out the yards, they take out the yeah. metering stick. Yeah. Yeah. Papita, you know, like all of that stuff. But if it's a woman, no, put it, put it, put it back in its place. How dare you show a nipple or in your pictures? You know, oh my gosh, it's it's uh, it's awful. So as much as I appreciate, yes, you do not have to use your sexuality to be empowered. Um, you can absolutely use your sexuality if it empowers you. You know, I think yeah, I think it's about that. owning owning your sexuality. Yeah. Because for so long, it has been used against women, right? The, our sexuality and our expression of it has always been used against us to, to vilify us and to call us certain names. And then the, when you do own it, you're not excused from that. But there is that point where we need to elevate that discussion into, um, you know, uh, owning sexuality and recognizing and respecting a woman's right to do that especially in the online space kasi dun nga tayo mas never violate no Nas, uh, with with online harassment and and all sorts of bashing that's done against women madalas it's women uh, uh, there's an article that came out before the internet is not a safe space for women it's just it doesn't happen you know the men are men can be trolled also but they're their physic, their their characteristics, yeah. their person, their body, you know, the way they look and stuff like that. It's not attacked in the way that women are attacked. I, I just wanted to add, no, na, na malaking influence din sa yung pagsakop sa atin ng mga ibang bansa. Kasi, di ba, nung olden, <laughs> olden times na naman ako. <laughs> Ito na naman si Jurassic. <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> times. <laughs> Jurassic times. <laughs> no, kasi di ba, nung yeah. before the Spanish, <laughs> Before the Spaniards colonized us, 
yung mga dami talaga ng babae, di ba? Yung indigenous tribes natin, our, our bodies were shown. Wala tayong bras, wala tayong ano. It was, uh, yung top natin, it was really uncovered. But then, the Spaniards entered and now yung ideal woman natin ay si Maria Clara who obeys every orders, who dresses modestly, who doesn't speak up pag hindi siya tinatawag. That's their ideal women and the They, they they made this ideal women to be someone na, na serve ng men to be someone na under men but before mm-hmm. that diba hindi naman ganyan yung Pilipina eh but, but that so, was yeah. a, i think that was a colonizer strategy right to mm-hmm. to take yeah. control of your narrative and show you that this is what the Filipina is mm-hmm. she's silent she's subservient she's dosa no she fucking isn't You know, uh, we've, we, we've had our own share of, of women warriors even during the, the Japanese occupation. But I think it was, uh, if we dissect that a little bit more, it was probably also a, a tool used to, to call a strategy to, to colonize us and, you know, mm-hmm. ex- Actually, ex- extract our obedience. You know, if you want to look more into that, the movie Walang Rape Sa Bontok by Carla Pulido Ocampo is a really good watch because it, it, it addresses our cultural heritage and our tribal nature about women being topless, about men and women living in harmony together, and like rape being abhorrent. Like all the tribal elders, if you say rape, are like, whoa, why would you do that to mm-hmm. a woman? That's terrible, you know? And that was yeah. our culture. You know, that's yeah. where we came from. That's our roots. There are so many things about our roots that we don't know anymore because we were colonized for so long that are still ingrained in us, but we're confused because of the other things that got patong-patong now on top of it. But if you want to watch that film, it's a very good, um, you know, place to look for our old heritage, our old culture. Palik lang natin dito sa online violence against women. I think we've established from, you know, the, the way that this discussion has flowed is that Online becomes the platform, pero yung violence in what form, whatever form it takes, it really attacks, uh, it really takes on an emotional, psychological toll on the person that this violence is directed against. No? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter kung online siya or, or, or offline. Uh, there's, you know, in terms of the, the in- violation. Yes, the violation that you feel on your personal space. But we were talking about what could be done. Gian, we've been talking a lot about engaging men and getting them into this conversation. You, we were lucky. You didn't need a lot of convincing, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> But This what do we important. need to do? What do we need to do to, to get more men to speak? I'm not, we're not saying that all men are you know, this way, but definitely we need to get more men to speak up also. The, the avenue is, is dominated by women's voices, but men need to get in there too. How do we make it an inclusive space for men? I want to begin with saying really why we need to start speaking up because if we don't, we might as well, you know, just be all that way as well uh, because this, this problem is going to keep happening. Um, it's important for men to speak up because we can't keep putting the burden on the victims to educate everyone. It's easier for me to do this than everyone here. And that's a problem. But while it's easier for me to do it, I should do it. And uh, I think more men, more men should be doing this. Uh, you know, You were, everyone's talking about the psychological impact of being a victim of online violence or, or physical uh, violence against women. There's, you know, uh, trauma, anxiety. Mm-hmm. And dala-dala na yun ng mga biktima eh. Bakit mo pa dadagdagan ng burden na turuan yung mga tao? Uh, alam naman natin na mali yun. Uh, so, you know, men really, as, as people who are direct victims of or direct, um, you know, sufferers of, of anxiety and, and, and trauma, we should do everything we can. And how do we do it? Uh, when, I, when I interviewed Dr. Ochoa for my article, she mentioned that there are two things 
that really encourage men to become allies. The first is to give them a community. Uh, the, uh, mm. That means, and that's usapang uh, lalaki, that's essentially allowing them the idea that if you're a good person, you're not going to lose all your friends because that's how it is now. If you're a yeah. good guy and you tell people, and you don't even have to say it in a non-bro way, you can say, bro, that's harassment. And it's, it would still sound manly, right? I mean, <laughs> bro, don't do that. <laughs> you can say it in a manly way. But they will leave you behind. A lot of them will leave you behind because they can't get away with, um, you know, engaging in this toxic behavior while you're around. So you need to let guys know that they have communities. And the good thing is the kids these days, they have better communities. When uh, I interviewed some transferees to Ateneo High, uh, some uh, girls who transferred from other, you know, all-girls schools into the newly co-ed Ateneo High, um, the boys came up to them, you know, some boys, some seniors, which was comforting. You know, seniors are always more comforting when they, when they help you. And they say, look, some shady stuff happened last year. So mm. if anything happens, you come to us and we will, you know, we will stand for you, which was really, you know, a very hopeful moment. Um, because you know that there are these communities in in you know in high school that reward mm. it's not a reward sorry that that allow boys to be better and that won't penalize them for being better. But for people my age, it is still a problem. If you lose all your mm. friends, where do you go? And mm. you need to give them that community. Second, the second thing that Dr. Ochoa recommended is that. We need to show uh, the boys that what they do can make a difference, uh, and that's I don't know that I, it, it's a system-wide approach I guess to that because I don't know how how necessarily to do it, but to start small, help one or two friends, you know, talk to someone who might be you know abused or talk or who might have a difficult time in school from uh, or getting bullied or whatever. It starts there. But we need to get that sense that if we start doing this, you know, it can help. The second uh, that I, I wanted to mention is to really introduce, and this is connected, to really introduce a curriculum of kindness and love and sex. Meaning, oh. uh, kindness is the kindness means um, teach also teaching women that it doesn't always have to be this way like the be- women in, in i don't know an admin uh who because it happened in ateneo high as well when they turned co-ed uh i heard reports when i interviewed people they said that it was the older uh women teachers who were saying mas and mga and mm. uh, that, that was really surprising and um when they also police what you wear or what you post yeah. It really has that sense of, it's a very Filipino culture thing. If I went through it, then you should also go through it. Um, oh, it's yeah. like um, just the justification we use to not pay people a big salary when they start out in, you know, in whatever industry. Oh, no, nung umpisa ako, kinita lang yung bayad. Eh. Uh, or nung umpisa ako, sinisigawan din ako. I really, you know, perpetuate these cycles of abuse just to have that, Satisfaction? Is it even satisfaction to know that someone else also went through this misery? So um, we need to really hammer in the kindness because kindness is what tells us, wait, it doesn't always have to be this way. I don't need to treat the interns like crap, uh, you know, once they come in. And that's how I say it because I've never experienced, you know, um, the that, you know, kindredness of, among women, that supposed kindred, kindredness among women, but mm. that's how I practice it. Like, I, I don't treat the interns like crap, and um, I don't want them to go through what I went through, and I don't, you know, the same way that I wish that my seniors never, you know, allowed me or let me go through, like, horrible stuff, or my bosses never treated me like crap. The, the curriculum of love and sex is really... Um, it's out there, you know. Love yep. is a nice thing to feel. Sex is yep. nice for most people. Um, how do we get it? How do we get it? Get there in a healthy way? And how do we? How do we? You know, love ourselves and love others without, you know, while respecting boundaries, 
making it really something that's you know more of a multiplying force as opposed to something you take from someone and you know which is sadly the case for a lot of relationships these days and um yeah uh, i guess the last lang is would be you know practicing that kindness as well when we exercise discourse and this doesn't apply to everyone if you're you know if you're a victim and you're angry and you want to go on twitter and say that men are trash it's completely you know valid behavior because um you know these are things that shouldn't have happened in the first place right but but if you can find it within yourself to be kind to teach people to educate people and it's easier for men than women then you should do it you should definitely go out of your way and do it because who else will um it's difficult for everyone else uh so it's really inculcating you know that kindness within yourself or really practicing that kindness as well for things that that was a lot <laughs> but thanks for listening if i might interject sorry anna uh if i might just add to what you had said you know uh, cuz i'm the kind of girl who has a lot of friends who are guys uh for a long time now so i hear you know they talk to me like i'm a guy and i hear a lot of them complain about girls that they end up with or date you know they're all crazy they're jealous they're they're so messed up they got so many issues and i'm like that's because they dated so many nasty men who <laughs> treated them badly and now they're damaged and you don't want to deal with it so if you want the women to be whole you got to make sure your friends aren't treating them like crap you know what i mean and that needs to be a cultural thing if women are being raped abused sexually harassed they're going to be messed up after a while the older they are the more abuse they've been through in the most is is what usually happens over here and i get so i get i argue with my guy friends all the time that if you want to have women who don't have issues don't give them issues you know <laughs> that's really one of the things too uh that we need to talk about as well. We have one comment here I'm going to read it out um from Katrina. I transferred to an all I transferred into a before all boys school. So formerly an all boys school. They had girls in senior high and we were not allowed to wear skirts because men will objectify us. What's sad is the teachers who implemented the rule were women. they did not even try to educate these men to not sexualize so again the burden was on the women uh, to to not be yeah. objectified rather than teaching men you know that it's wrong to objectify women yeah anna can i chime in really quickly sure. about the pants um one is I interviewed some some girls as well who who transferred into you know a newly co-ed school, and they were talking about the pants. Uh, I, I think I'm familiar with this policy. I know where it is. But those pants, they were they were happy that oh oh my god, pockets. The pants didn't even the pockets were too small. They they weren't even functional pockets. So the girls were were angry about that as well. And the sizes, they wouldn't let them get the boys' pants because and some of the girls just didn't. have like decent sized pants which was um really you know a funny oversight um when you when you think about it you transition into a co-ed school and you transition to a new new uniform and uh, obviously the new uniform policy was not like streamlined and um no one bothered to ask, apparently in a faculty meeting where they decided this or the admin meeting where they decided this no one even asked even among the uh you know women administrators Well, what happens when you know the girls want to pee? Like, so peeing is just harder for them, or I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but you know, these are mechanics that I am not entirely familiar with. I'm just sharing the uh, sharing, I guess, what what they went through and the thought process that they they put into it. They didn't they didn't even think about the you know the girls' experiences. Really? Parang yun ang default, eh, no? Yun ang default to police the girls. rather than oh 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 isa pa yon good good call yon bands kasi minsan we yung kaya tayo i i remember growing up like this na kailangan kang pag-ingatan kasi babae ka and then when you hear that from people that you trust or people who are supposed to be your guardians guardianship of your protection do you think na oo nga no diba and you 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 find yourself 
falling into that, oh, they care about me. Pero controlling is not caring. You know, I grew up remembering things. It's in the end, eh. na to. <laughs> controlling is not caring. And policing me is not the same as protecting me. Yeah. I Saka, think... Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, because if you tell a girl na parang, you know, at a young age, we teach girls about consent na, oh, don't let a boy touch you if you don't want, or, uh, you know, mag-ingat ka sa labas, etc. What you're actually teaching is them is when that happens to them, it's their fault because they didn't do what you told them. What they to uh what you told them to, de ba? So parang kapag sinayi mo na dapat magingat ka, wag ka magsuot ng ganito, kasi kung hindi marirate ka or and so on, ang message iba eh. versus you know telling a boy your 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 son na uh, don't do that. Bakit ganon? If you have a, a daughter and a son, yeah. we protect the girl, but we don't teach the the son. Mm-mm. Yes. And also with the clothing thing, when you teach a girl not to wear something so she doesn't get raped, you're pretty much saying it's okay if that other girl gets raped, yes. as long as it's not you. You know, like just avoid the rape. It's okay if it's happening. Which is really think, messed up. I think though, but those are the subtle signals that kind of breed this, you know, the, the way that we see it now, women against women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Women looking down against a certain kind of women that they perceive to be, right? As bad. The, I'm those not comments. Other girls. Diba? Yeah. I'm not that kind of girl. Yeah. Don't be that kind of girl. Mm-hmm. But that's what they tell us women. Can, in, and I nakikita ko with the examples that, that we were, were brought in. Parang that kind of feeds into that toxic femininity kung meron mang ganon. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, we have an interesting question here. Mm. Um, how do you differentiate objectification and admiration? Because I have some guy friends who are fans of K-pop girl groups. And there are times they'd say, I like her boobs, I like her body. And when I ask about it, they say they aren't sexualizing the K-pop girl group. They say they're just admiring it. This puts me in a dilemma because I'm not sure what to think about it. Ang ganda, ang ganda ng tanong. Gian, maybe you can, you can, you can take that. You know, when, when does it become, when do you stop from admiration to objectification? Um, I think for me, it's really about reading uh, into the degree of consent. consent. Uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to these things. Because you really can't help uh, but, you know, look at people you're attracted to sexually in a sexual manner. Uh, and th- the two things is that, uh, is this something, is this exchange something that's, uh, you know, that's consensual? Am I looking at, you know, creep shots of someone in their Borake album, which I know guys do a lot, or versus, you know, are they, are they clearly, you know, putting some, uh, I don't know, sexual flavor into, into, this, into this interaction? And, and number two, is I guess the way you express your uh, your admiration or even sexualization, which you know I think in some cases is completely in some contexts is completely fine as long as you know both sides are thinking it. You know, um, uh, it's it's something that I still talk about with friends. We, we haven't figured you know we haven't really figured it out uh, how to do it, but it's really I come from a place of respect. You know, as a guy, right? I come from a place of respect. Let me know if it's, you know, if it's messed I'm sorry that you have to let me know if it's like, you know, if it's weird, but just let me know and uh, let's go from there. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, the other day at the grocery, merong cutie pie na naka-man bun. Parang, you know, uh, when, when I saw him, parang, you know, I caught my breath and then parang mabagal ako nilalagay yung groceries ko on the counter kasi nakatingin ako sa kanya. So parang, mm, may, basta, you know, may dating siya. And then I caught myself, no, wait, 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 this is exactly what I tell people, you're not supposed to be objectifying me. Ano ba talaga? Pero na, I mean, wow. Di ba, ang tagal kong nagano, di ba, ang tagal nag, nag-load ng groceries ko because I was just staring at him. What a, what a nice looking man. So, <laughs> hindi ko alam kung proper pa ba ako. 
I know it instinctively. That's how I felt. Kailan ba nagiging mali yun? Teka, girls. Kailan ba nagiging mali yun? I'd love to hear about this. <laughs> I think that it depends on, on um, the degree of the sexualization, you know, because we can't tell people to bottle up their urges like, you know, oh, don't feel this way because then you're just going, you know, the opposite extreme way. You know, of course you're going to feel attraction. We have pheromones, even by science, you're going to feel sexually attracted to people because of pheromones and hormones and things like this, right? But when it becomes a, um, a violent or say an abusive type of attraction, like you want to act on it, and you would do this, or it becomes a little bit nasty, like you want to take control mm -hmm. of that person, mm -hmm. I think that's when it, it yeah. kind of crosses the line. You know, if you're just like, oh, whoa, that guy's really hot. My gosh, I'd love to go out with him. Then that's fine, you know? But if you're like, I would do this, and I'm going to, yeah, I would do this to him. And even if he has a girlfriend, I'm gonna, you know, yeah. like when you get to that, then you're crossing a boundary already. If it's a harmless kind of, oh, wow, like she's hot. I like her. I like her outfit. You know, oh my gosh, look at her boobs. <laughs> you know, like people are going to say those things all the time. Even girls look at K-pop stars like that. You know, like, my gosh, she's so hot. I love her butt. You know, but we're not <laughs> telling them not to look at their butts, right? I raised my hand. Because I wanted to, of course, I thought, what if I drop something in front of him and, you know, kind of chat him up and see if he can, I can get his number or whatever it is that kids do nowadays. But that's it, right? I can I make overtures? And it's also, aside from whether or not um, you um, act on it, it also depends on what did the other person feel about it. Kasi minsan, di ba, nung tayo nahihirapan eh, na, wait, sa akin, parang nag-hailong naman ako dun sa nadaanan ko. Bakit ba? Kaya din, kaya din, pag babae yung may gawa, bakit kapag babae yung may gawa sa lalaki, hindi same yung pakiramdam? Kasi walang power imbalance, di ba? So parang, kung oh, matutuwa pa yung lalaki, then that's okay. If you're flattered, then that's good. Eh. Like, Magpalitan kayo ng number at magtextan kayo, di ba? Pero, if the other person felt na yung space niya na invade, I felt harassed, I felt uncomfortable, mm. then that, then, then, then magkakaroon ng problema. And so, ikaw, iisipin mo din if what you're gonna do will uh, make someone uncomfortable. Ang noted ako dyan, Miss Ban. Sige, noted. Before I approach the next guy in a hot man bun that I see at the grocery. <laughs> Doon lang naman ako nagpupunta ngayon eh, sa grocery, di ba? Pero naririnig ko sa sinasabi ni Ban. And Gian, you can also interject. Parang, as a woman, I shouldn't also assume na porkit lalaki ka, you're gonna want me to make overtures just because yeah. you're a man. You're supposed to want it all the time. Swerte ka nga eh. I tried to make a pass at you. Mm. Hindi rin dapat ganun, right? Yeah. Oo. Actually, same siya yun ang issue ko sa bakit kapag uh, celebrities, kapag men um, admire, objectify women, celeb female celebrities, we react. Pero yung mga girls, tayong girls, we also objectify male celebrities. Actually, even Vico Soto. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Pero sobrang subject siya na, oh, parang si baby ko, ganun, di ba? Bakit okay lang? So parang ako, I feel like dapat pantay. Kasi gender response, even when we are calling out someone dahil ba masama siya, okay lang i-call out siya sa ginagawa niya. Parang ganun, di ba? Pero may nag-raise, ako hindi pa ako masyadong solid dito, pero may nag-raise nga sa akin na iba kasi yung effect. Kapag sa lalaki, because may power, um, may power sila more than women. Iba yung nagiging effect ng pag objectify sa kanila. Parang ganun yung explain sa akin. Kasi ako, I think, dapat fair. Dapat wag din tayong ganun, girls, di ba? Pero, yeah. Correct. Pero may nagbangin. Ang ganda. Hershey, just, akang you know, ganda ng... ng... Sige, yeah, yeah, Gian. Then we'll have to wrap up na. Pero Gian, oh, Gian, Gian, just, please. Just, yeah. Just this linguistic observation. Um, I think the way we express desire is, is super, super interesting. Um, when some of my friends talk about their K-pop uh, idols, they don't really say, I want to do this. No, you know, they actually put themselves under 
after them in, in terms of power dynamics. Step on my neck. Alam mo yun? And um, parang, <laughs> you have the power. I give you the power. May merong, merong ganong, merong ganong dynamic. It's not the healthiest thing, I guess, to say to tell someone to step on your neck. But um, you you are giving away the power, you know. And and I think that that's what makes it a little okayer. Meaning, meaning, we can get to an expression of desire that's okay. Like, when I see a cute girl, I can say something like, Grabe, gusto ko siya pagluto na almusal. Or something oh! like that. And that sounds better. In, in some way, I'm sure there's a smoother way to kind of say it. But, you know, you can express your desire. Just, just don't do it in, in a manner that's so colored by your, you know, power imbalance. Um, don't be creepy. Do that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be, be creepy. creepy. <laughs> breakfast breakfast is a good fantasy. You know, the breakfast is nice. Yeah, so breakfast is. If a man yeah. walked over to me and said, "I would love to cook you breakfast one day," I would not be insulted. I'd be like, "Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you, but I'm taken." You know, but I wouldn't be offended. You know what I mean? like, well, you'd tell all of us, right, Cat? Those are those are one of the things that you'd go to all of your girlfriends. Like, oh my God, this guy just came up to me, telling lunch, get me cook breakfast for me. It's the exact thing you'd want to tell your other girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not really use of words. Because sometimes we receive messages from men that are like, Hi, I just want to say I really admire you. I think you're really beautiful. And uh, if you don't feel creeped out with it, you know that he comes from a good place. But the other people are just like their penis. Nila. Like out of nowhere, like oh, oh. men, they just show their penis. And I'm like, what makes you think I want to see your, your penis? Who does that <laughs> work for? Who yeah. does that work? Can somebody yeah. tell me who that works for? Who does the penis picture work for? Really? I am you know, sometimes I want to send them back and say, I need to fact check this. I need to fact check. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. You should actually put fact disclaimer, you know, fact checked. This is Object false information. <laughs> My God. Oh. Oh. Sobrang saya ng discussion na to. As Oo, it, ang sayang ng discussion. Ang dami na rin natin na discuss. Nag-umpisa tayo sa online violence against women. Napasok rin natin yung you know, real-life experiences of violence, being stalked, being threatened. I think we all we saw here clearly that there's a relationship between online violence or you know the way that we're bullied and bashed online and the way that it's done offline meron talaga siyang correlation no nagko-continue siya nagko-continue siya and at the same time it also uh, we also saw where it's coming from like we we did a we did a good round of the different ways that these things these behaviors are normalized mm-hmm. in our society and at the same time ang gustong gusto ko rin dito Hershey sa talk na to we didn't stop there we didn't stop at you know talking about the problems we didn't stop at talking about um, just griping we also talked about the avenues where we can all be better even we even checked ourselves us women checked ourselves right you know in terms of Hey, girlfriend, what kind of behavior now is not acceptable in 2020? You know? So, I like that discussion so much na yung parang lahat enriched sana yeah. sa napag-usapan. Yeah. Super. And I didn't even feel like it's been one and a half hours. <laughs> parang feeling ko 10 minutes pa lang. <laughs> wow! Talagang ano? Kasi, kasi Jurassic. Nag-umpisa tayo sa Jurassic period. Part of the day. Oh. Yeah. And, and I just want to thank Ban, Scat, and Gian for sharing with us no yung experiences nila and also I I learned a lot of new facts today. Correct. Sobrang dami and daming natutunan. Ako personally yung papasalamat ako dito sa panel na even I started to share my own experiences. I wasn't thinking about it but I felt very safe yeah. in this space to share an experience in a way na I know that this group will help me process it mm-hmm. a little bit more and not, you know, make me feel like I was, there was something wrong with me. 
Right. So sobrang ko na appreciate yon. Uh, I want to thank the the panel for that and you Hershey as always for being my my safe space on spilling the tea. This is the kind of safe space that we want to to build for our viewers and those of us those people who are watching us today. This is you know brought to us by She Decides. Hershey, yeah. you're, you're more... Tayo, nagkakilala tayo dahil she, she decides, hindi ba? Yes. Actually, guys, sa mga nanonood ng video natin ngayon, She Decides has been fighting and lobbying for women's rights for the past three years here in the Philippines. So, um, they fight for a world where she decides without question. She decides about her body, when to love, who to love, and kaya nga, we're encouraging you all to sign the manifesto for women's reproductive health. Kaya you can go to their Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter page. It's She Decides. Click the link in their bio. The manifesto is found there. Or if you want to go straight to it, it's shedecides.com slash manifesto. Para naman, we can all fight for a country, for a world where she decides without question. Salamat, Hershey. Narinig niyo po yan kung, you know, we can continue this discussion on the She Decides platforms. We can keep spilling the tea, keeping it hot and real on issues and on real stories. This is the way that we make a better world and a more compassionate place, safe space for everyone to be in. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode of Spilling the Tea, Keeping It Hot and Real on Online Violence Against Women. See you next time.